All right, so in this video, we're going to be deriving the TD character table, one of these very commonly used uh, point groups, right? Te any molecule of tetrahedral symmetry, like methane, uh, is a common one, good one to visualize. Uh, it's a really important point group, but fairly complicated actually to derive because there's so many symmetry operations. Luckily, there's a lot of symmetry, so there's not going to be a lot of classes. But first, we have to come up with all the symmetry operations. Of course, we know there's O's identity. Um, and then there's C3s. And we're going to look at the C3s here. The C3 is the principal rotation axis. And the C3 is not too bad to visualize once you get a hang of it. Um, the easiest one to see here is just this one going straight through the um, CH bond. This CH bond pointing up, we can see here. That's going to be a 120 degree rotation here. And then the bottom of the tetrahedron, right, is a tripod. And so we're taking this atom and going to there, that atom and going to there, and that atom and going to there. So that's one of those C3s. But then we can orient, it, orient this C3 to be through any of the CH bonds, right? And that's what the other three lines are showing. So there's four CH bonds. So there's going to be four C3s, OK? So we have you know C3. Um, we have uh, C3 prime, we could call it. We have C3 double prime, and then we have C3 triple prime. Those are the four that we're talking about. For each of these, we also have a C3 twice that we could do. So that'd be three C3 twice. Um, and I'm using the hat notation on all these. These are operations we're talking about. That's what the hat notation signifies. C3 twice uh, prime. So these are 240 degree rotations, right? So now going this atom all the way to that atom, for example. C3 twice double prime and C3 tries uh, triple prime. Um, and all these are, are C3s, and they're mathematically going to behave very similarly. So we're going to group all these into the same class. Now, their C3s are C3 three, three twice. A lot of times we've seen that C3s and C3 twice go in the same class because um, rotating clockwise versus counterclockwise is the same as doing 120 degrees or 240 degrees rotation. So we have eight rotations here, uh, and there are eight C3s. So this is the eight C3 class. Identity is O is in its own class, so that's going to be E. Notice I've dropped the hat notation here because I'm talking about classes. What else do we have? We have C2s, OK? And it turns out, so these are 180 degree rotations, and we have three of them. Um, we can call them C2, C2 prime, and C2 double prime. These ones are a lot harder to visualize for most people. It really helps to look at a molecule or the symmetry at Otterbein website. Um, I have a video on describing how, how to use that and what can, that can go, or encourage you to check it out yourself. But basically what that's doing is it's bisecting any of these sort of um, HCH angles that we have. And the way that that works is, again, this is 180 degree rotation, so it's flipping it like this. So, this atom's gonna to go to that atom, these are gonna interconvert, and these hydrogens are gonna interconvert. So sort of flip like this. And then of course, you can do that through any of the CH, um, uh, CHC angles. And so that ends up being that you could do it, you know, via this one or in between uh, that one there. And so you end up with uh, three of these. Okay, and all these are C2s. They're all 180 degree rotations. Um, and so mathematically, they're very similar. So we group them in the same class. We call that class three C2s because it, it contains three different C2 axes. We also have an S4 that we can use. Um, and these are all, these are coincident with the C2. So we're going to have three of these S4s. Um, remember, an S4 is uh, a C4 followed by a horizontal uh, mirror plane, so sigma H. So we can call these um, S4, S4 prime, and S4 uh, double prime. And how these work is, again, you're doing uh, the rotation bisecting this angle, but now you're, you're rotating it um, only halfway. So you're, you're rotating this atom to the front here, and then it's going to flip down to that atom. So the hydrogen goes over 90 degrees and then flips to the other one. Okay. Um, so again, you can use the, the Otterbein website to, to uh, visualize these, but it's coincident with the S4. 
Now, whenever we have S4s, we like to see what or any S's in proper rotation axes. These are called this S notation. We want to see what happens if we run them multiple times. So if we do an S4 twice, what is that? That's a, a C4 um, twice followed by sigma H twice. Well, sigma H twice would be a flip from top to bottom to bottom to top, right? When you flip something in a mirror plane. Um, and so that's equal to identity, if we go top to bottom and then bottom back to top. So that's just equal to C4 twice, and that's just equal to C2. And we already have the C2s there. So S4 twice doesn't do anything, but S4 three times is gonna be equal to a C4 three times, followed by a sigma H three times, which um, a sigma H three times was top, bottom, bottom, top, top, bottom. So that's just equal to a sigma H. And this is a unique operation. So the S4 three, we have that. And to visualize that, instead of going um, 90 degrees here, we would go 180 degrees and then back to 270. So effectively, we're going the opposite direction um, behind us. Okay, it's hard to draw in two dimensions here, but that's gonna flip us back to, to that atom this way. So it's the counterclockwise version of the S4, the S43. Of course, we're gonna have that, those S43s coincident with all the C2s. Or, so we're gonna have S4 uh, three, we're gonna have S4 three prime, and we're gonna have S4 three double prime. And so these are all improper rotation axes. Mathematically, they're all very similar. And so we're gonna group them into the six S4 class. We have six improper rotation axes. Um, and there they are. Last one that we have are the uh, sigma Ds. And so for the sigma Ds, uh, we could call these sigma Vs, um, but by convention, we call them sigma Ds. They um, cut through any of uh, the HCHs. And so there's there's six combinations here. Um, if you think about this, if you label these hydrogens as maybe one, um, two, three, four, let's say. Um, so this mirror plane contains, they all are going to contain the central atom, the carbon. This mirror plane contains atoms one and two. So one and two and the central carbon aren't going to change because they're in the mirror plane. But four and three are going to switch places. Okay, so you can have on the mirror plane that's one, two, we could call that sigma D, um, one, two, maybe. Uh, you could also have sigma D, um, let's call it one, three, right? So I'm not shown here, but that would bisect uh, uh, this way, right? And then interswap um, four and two. We could have sigma D, one, four. Um, we could have sigma D, um, uh, we can't do two, one, but we can do two, three. We can't do two, one, because we already have that. Uh, sigma D, two, four. And then lastly, we can have sigma D, uh, three, four. And so there are six here. They're all mathematically very similar. And so those we'll put in another class called six sigma D. And that's actually it for tetrahedral. So there's a lot of operations, but they group very nicely into only um, five classes. And so that's the first step to figuring out the um, character table. We have here a total of 24 symmetry operations in tetrahedral, but they group only into five classes. So that will simplify things for part two of this video, where we actually then derive the mean of the character table now that we've found all the symmetry uh, operations. And there's one last thing I just wanted to point out in this part of the video, which is um, that the C2s are coincident also with this mirror plane. The, the C2s are in those mirror planes, okay? Um, and so that'll help us when we're visualizing some, some functions for, for the next part of the video. All right.